Do you really need another person telling you how challenging, difficult, unprecedented, insert your adjective of choice 2020 was? What's that? What's happening with 2021? Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, still video games, right? When making this list, I didn't realize how top heavy 2020 was even compared to 2019. But we can't take for granted how much gaming has increased in popularity and how much time us gamers were allowed to unashamedly spend playing our video games. So let's rank our top eight games of 2020. Hey, Danny with the DMGC here, where we talk about music, video games, tech, and any combination of the three. Before we dive right into our list of the best games of 2020, I want to quickly point out that we are doing a giveaway of a collector's edition of The Last of Us Part 2 for the PS4. So stick around to the end of the video if you want to find out how to enter to win. I'm going to admit, I haven't actually played an Assassin's Creed game since the original trilogy, so my perspective may be a little skewed here, but I actually really enjoy Valhalla. This is the only third party open world game of the three that launched near next gen that's on this list, and while it doesn't really do a whole lot to redefine the genre, it takes the trends of recent years and it does them well, besides actually being functional and playable. That's not to say it's without its share of visual glitches, but I've encountered very few and it's more combat forward gameplay feels well thought out. Rarely do I find myself going on a repetitive fetch mission and while I don't really care for the future timeline aspect of the main story, it plays well. Raids are fun and rewarding and progression that unlocks abilities feel earned even if there's a little bit of gatekeeping early on because of it. I'm also generally a sucker for settlement building mechanics so while I don't think it's genre defining, I'm still playing this quite a bit so it made my 8th spot. I'm going to use the same technicality everyone else that has this game ranked for 2020, knowing that it didn't exactly release this past year, but like everyone else, I fell into the hype. Hype in a good way. This is one of two games this past year that I and many others have successfully managed to get our non-gamer friends to play with, and with 2020 being spent at home a lot, it really capitalized on that. Sure, it's a highly social game that foregoes typical game mechanics and rules, but that social aspect is done so well you don't really notice it. I mean, you can and people have done entire think pieces on the psychology of lying to your friends, and that's what makes this game so interesting. I mean, who doesn't love finally getting imposter and using your social tactics from previous matches to exact revenge on your friends? Even online with clever name changes, Twitch streams, and entire subculture, it's worth the play. It became an online phenomenon for a reason and is still holding on to that wave successfully, so this one gets 7th. The sequel slash not sequel, but also not just DLC, but also not full-fledged title, released to much hype and it's largely the best game on the new PS5 right now. It's not very long and it's obviously very familiar if you play 2018 Spider-Man, but don't get it confused. Miles Morales is its own game with unique mechanics in its own right. Not only is this a good showcase of the PS5, but it's a good example of creating diverse gameplay and how to include diversity in a video game in general, but a great way of reusing aspects of previous games while keeping this one feeling fresh and worth its price. Miles is a very well written character, given space to grow into future titles, and his combat Combat feels uniquely distinctive of that of Peter's. Naturally, some of the dialogue is catered to a younger audience, but as a whole, it feels closer to a complete package, which is surprising for a AAA game that doesn't have a 25 plus hour storyline. Ray tracing is nice, although it's not super noticeable in the middle of all the action, but it's a great example of how game design will change in the future with not only SSDs, but high speed data loading and all that technical jazz. The only reason it's not in the top 5 is because well, it is a little short and more of a tease of what's to come, but still good enough to make 6 on the list and 100% worth a play. I've personally gone through a rediscovery and love for metroidvania style platformers over the last couple of years, triggered by Hollow Knight in 2017, so it's not a huge surprise that this game made my top 5. While other platformers like Hollow Knight focus on more pixel type mechanics and combat, Ori 2, like the first one, takes a more free flowing and rapid pace with natural progression that just feels smooth and organic. 
Abilities you collect that quickly open up movement almost immediately feel second nature and there are still challenging sections that will test your skills. On top of all of that, the visuals are absolutely stunning, filled with life and emotion that never dives too deep into darkness. Placed in 2020, it just feels good to play and look at. Some might call it a little short, but not for me. It feels just right that lends to multiple playthroughs. It might not be the most mainstream title, but it should be. Ori and the Will of the Wisps makes top 5. I think some would argue that battle royale games have taken over the industry a little bit too much, but I just don't feel that way, at least not about this one. It only made sense that the largest FPS franchise in gaming would delve into the space, and quite frankly, they've got a stronghold on it right now. When this first launched in March, Modern Warfare was still in my regular rotation of gameplay, and Warzone completely took over that spot instantly. The Gulag and in-game currency system was a genius move that let gamers be invested while still having a quick way to hop back into a game with minimal downtime. A gunplay first title in the battle royale arena space. Out of all the games I've played in 2020, this has the most hours and consistent playtime. It does get a bit frustrating at times, so quality over quantity is why this is fourth. Like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima doesn't do a whole lot to redefine open world games, but it just goes to show how a video game can take you to a brand new place and give you that sense of wonder that as gamers we still seek. Roleplaying as Jin in feudal Japan, Ghost of Tsushima does exactly that. The scenery, the art, the music, the culture. I'm not huge on spending time with in-game cameras and photo shooting, but I did that a lot with this game. On top of that, instead of doing the traditional skill tree that you unlock with points as you progress, this game instead opts to provide gear that you can find and upgrade, tailored to different playstyles, and unlock different combat abilities that make progression through exploration much more enticing. It works really well, and even if the facial animations aren't exactly blockbuster, the voice acting is good enough to invest into the stories on the island of Tsushima. This one gets a 3 spot. Being one of the most polarizing games of 2020, possibly of all time, The Last of Us Part 2 at the 2 spot might surprise some gamers watching this video, but as I thoroughly explained in my review of this game over the summer, I love this game and I still do 6 months later. Still, at least Naughty Dog delivered a complete and functioning game, unlike some other polarizing games of 2020. Oh my god! But really, the immersion to the story really worked for me, and even though stealth gameplay is hard to pull off, this one does it well. It's of course a heavily story driven game, but it's not just a push a button visual novel either. There are things to do and explore. I mean, hell, people are still dissecting and discussing the story. It's kind of crazy because in the traditional sense it's not a quote unquote fun game due to the nature of the story, but like the first six seasons of Game of Thrones, experiencing it is so thought and emotionally provoking it becomes enjoyable. Multiple playthroughs actually make this even more provoking so the replayability holds up. Sure, maybe I would have switched the pacing around a little bit to address some of the valid criticisms, but what do I know, I'm just a guy on the internet. Either way, this was my most intense gaming experience of 2020, so this one's my runner up to game of the year. And for our game of the year, Hades. It seems like this game has garnered more attention since the game awards and more and more people bringing it up, so I'm gonna hype it up here as well. Hades is the complete package. Tight gameplay, fun to play, challenging yet fair, insanely replayable due to its nature as a roguelike, a great story, great music, and great voice acting to boot. The way this game builds upon your progression and reattempts to escape Hades, this is like a gold standard on video game design. Dying isn't pointless, and while you can technically beat or complete a run during the first playthrough, you're almost incentivized to start over as you unlock abilities and become familiar with different playstyles. Supergiant Games has been making great games for years now, through the likes of Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre, but Hades is a masterpiece. It does get quite difficult the further you progress, but as you learn the mechanics and gameplay through your runs, it gets easier to manage, and one that will challenge you to beat your own records over and over. Hands down, this is the game of the year. So that's our list of best games for 2020. 
some of you might be wondering where Final Fantasy VII Remake and Animal Crossing is, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I did play them, but I didn't particularly like them. I don't really know what else to say beyond that, but if you're interested in knowing more why I didn't like them, uh, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll make a follow-up video or a blog post about it. Still, it's going to be exciting to see what 2021 has in store for us, especially now that next-gen consoles are gonna be in their first full year. And before I close out this video, as I mentioned at the start, we are doing a giveaway of a collector's edition of The Last of Us Part 2 for the PS4. To enter, you just need to be a subscriber, so make sure you click that subscribe button and click on the gleam.io link in the description to submit your entry and additional entry opportunities as well. But the only real requirement is to be a subscriber to this channel and submit through that link. And I'll apologize in advance because this is going to be limited to North America only because I'm doing this out of pocket, so just an FYI. The winner will be contacted via email on Saturday, January 23rd, so it'll run for about two weeks from the launch of this video. Good luck, click the like button if you like this video, it really does help the YouTube algorithm, and I'll catch you next time.